Well, I got the forklift battery home safe and sound on the old truck. Now, I'm going to go get my voltmeter and pop off all the caps on here. Now, I want to do some testing. See these caps? These are protective covers on the lead connections. Wait, tell you I haven't been serviced in a while. All right, that's not going to be a one-handed job. So all these caps come off, and then I will check each and every cell individually. So we've got, as I already said, we have a 36 volt battery. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 17, 18, 18 2 volt cells. So what I have to do now to get this off the truck is I have to remove the uh, I just realized there's a cell not connected. I have to remove this battery cell by cell to get it out of the bed of the truck. It's very curious what they have done here. They must have had a bad cell and cut it out so that they could continue using off this cell. Interesting. Well, yeah, that was the original. Oh, okay, it broke. It's physically broken inside. Okay, see that? That's why they did that, so they could still use the battery. Well, it's going to be expected that there will be some dead cells. That is definitely going to be expected with an old battery like this. And the, the water is below the plates, it looks like. Can't quite tell. It looks like it's also a little bit frozen. No, no, it's just below the plates. See, they didn't service these properly. So I'm going to have to go get, before I do anything, I'll have to go get a few gallons of water. That one's full. So I have to get distilled water. See, that one's low. So yeah, they, um, they weren't servicing it properly, which is what I figured was going to be the case. So a lot of these batteries are going to be, a lot of these cells are going to be very low, so that one's full, and some of them won't, and I'm guessing a lot of them I'll be able to recover. So two of them have water and the rest so far don't. See that one's low, you can see, can you see that? You can see that it's dry inside. That one's full. Where am I here? So you can see the liquid in there. You can see the reflection. So I'll have to go get some water first. First thing, that one's low. Yeah, they just see that's what the thing with the forklift batteries is in normal warehouse use, they just get used and abused. That one's full. So that one's full. That one's empty. Low, I should say. Low. So the first thing I'll do, like I said, I'm going to top these off. That one's low. I'll top them all off, and then I'll check the cells. There's no point in checking anything without the water. That one's filled. And that one, I'm just curious anyway. Yeah, it's half filled. And then I'm going to separate the banks of batteries into 12, three 12-volt 12 sets. So I'll cut them off at six, so I'll have one, two, well, one's bad, but I'll have six in a row in a series and then cut the, uh, the connection. And then the next six, cut the connection, and the next five. And I will test, I will charge them as 12 volt battery banks on my generator and see what I can pull out of these guys. See if I can put them right into use or not. But we'll, we'll um, go get the voltmeter and the water next. Hi, this is Troy from the do-it-yourself world and the off-grid project. I've got here my gigantic 2,000 pound forklift battery in the bed of my old truck. Now, I have always wanted a forklift battery for off-grid living, for my solar-powered off-grid home. The forklift batteries are the best battery in, from all my research and studies, now, other people might have their own theories and ideas, but uh, cost per uh, amp hour output and for the life 
of the battery. The forklift battery is the very best hands down. These things if handled and cared for properly can last 20 years or more. I have read on forums 15, 20, 22 years, 24 years of the life of a forklift battery in off-grid solar powered applications. Now used in industrial work and powering a forklift these things are ma majorly abused. I will show you here the top of this battery for example. You can see it's, it's just filthy. This thing has been abused badly. You can see the corrosion all over in the case. You can see the acid has spilled out and poured out everywhere. They haven't washed it. They haven't really cared for it. It looks like they might rinse off the top every once in a while, but the acid is poured down into here and just sort of sits there and the, uh, the entire battery bank is just in a sorry shape. And this is from my research online. This is average. This is how they look. Actually, this one is cleaner than some of the ones I've seen. So I got lucky as far as appearance wise. Now, this is going to be a job because I have to maintain this battery in the bed of the truck. Before I take it apart, I want to make sure and test every one of the cells. So let me pause the camera and crank this uh, tripod up higher so you can watch with me as I go. Now, what I have to do first is make sure that all the cells are filled and uh, since I'm, I'm afraid this is going to take a lot of water so I'm just going to pour it right in. This is distilled water only. Now you want it, the water to come just above the top of the plates. I'm thinking what a quarter inch from my, if I remember, remember correctly above the top of the plates. So I'm just pouring it in there. I know it's going to be hard for you to see and that, I'll let that set and settle so it can sink down in between the plates properly and then we'll come back and double check them again before I do anything else they're not very low from the at least according to the first one the way it looks now the first two they're not very low just a little bit low so the battery might not be as bad as I thought it could be now, the reason I wanted a forklift battery because you can swap out individual cells. This is a 36 volt battery bank, so I, even if half of them are bad and defective, I can still get at least probably a good six cells to make a 12 volt battery bank for my off grid solar powered tiny house. Now, that one's thirsty. Again, this is distilled water only. You do not want to put tap water or any other sort of water in your batteries. It will cause corrosion inside. Distilled water only. I'm going to have to go get another gallon here in a minute. Should have brought it out with me. So the first step in off-grid solar forklift battery maintenance, when you get it home, top off the cells. Now, I've done some studies on how to disassemble this. There is no video on YouTube showing how to take a forklift battery out of the warehouse and put it into service for your off-grid solar home. So I'm forging ahead with the first, as far as I can tell, YouTube video on how to use a discarded forklift battery for my house. Um, I've studied some Chinese videos that I couldn't understand a word, but I watched the video to see how to take these apart best. And I will hopefully be able to take these cells apart pull them out of here and get them over to the tiny house so I can use my truck for other things. So I'm going to be back with some more water. Okay, I have finished filling all of the cells in here with distilled water. Now what I need to do is remove all these caps, every one of them, so I can reach the 
terminals. Might need a screwdriver. Because what I want to do next is I'm going to want to measure each and every cell. And see what the cell's voltages are. And I'm probably going to have to get some sulfuric acid. Because often what happens is the acid gets boiled off. Alright, I'm going to get a screwdriver I'll finish taking off these plates, these caps. Alright, I've removed all the caps. Actually, I used a wooden spatula type of a tool for safety. You do not want to use an all metal tool for working with the battery cap removal. If you short any two of these terminals out, you will have a serious explosion hazard. Now, I will say if I was working with acid or if there was any acid on top of here, I would be wearing rubber gloves, but since I've handled batteries pretty much my whole life, I know uh, right now it's pretty safe. I did go and wash my hands after popping off the caps. I am off the grid so I don't have a lot of water or I'd give this a good wash down right now and a, uh, a good brushing with a wire brush because it certainly needs it. I think I might do so anyway with a, uh, a bucket and a brush because this is in pretty sorry looking shape as far as cleanliness. So I'm going to try to set up my meter. Now I'm first going to set this up on 200 volt setting. What I want to do is see what the entire battery bank reads from plus to minus and see what we got before I do anything else. All I've done is topped off the water in, in the entire battery. So we've got here 30.9 volts. Sadly, this one is not connected if it was, although, uh, although that spins, it does 32.8. That's interesting. Although this one uh, is loose and spinning, it does have a connection. It's connected through this wire touching here to the, um, to the lead. So I can at least get a reading. So the entire battery bank is 32.8. Alright, they were running off of a partial at 30.9. 30 so, now I'm going to go across to each and every single individual cell and get our reading. So we got plus here to minus and we've got what? Plus to minus. We've got three point okay, two point four volts. Alright. Plus to minus. I've got one point five volts. One point nine. That two point oh. It's hard to get a good Yeah, you know what? I'm gonna clean this. I'm gonna get the the wire brush and some water and I'm going to give this a clean up so I can so I can work on this better. I'll have to take the camera away and uh, give it a good scrub down then I'll get better readings on the voltages. So we'll be back in a few minutes here. Okay in the end, sorry about the movement of the camera the bed liner is moving. In the end I took the camera off the bed of the truck and I used a wire wheel on a um, battery powered drill and put on um, eye protection and then I gave it a good rinse down afterwards so I want to come down to 20 volts sitting on here I don't know if you can see the meter but so for, forgive me if you can't but I should get better readings now so we got 2.04 2.04 <clears throat> Much better readings now. 2.01. Sorry, I'm in your way. 2.03. Um, plus minus would be opposite. 1.98. 2.04. I might have some good cells in here. 2.04. Oh. Wow, see, there's... That's why these batteries fail, see? As a bat as a battery pack, 0.06, see? There is a dead cell, 0.06. This one is a dead, dead cell. And that's why these, these packs fail. The rest of the cells are probably pretty good. Oh, 0 0.25, not good. Wow, 0.25. There's a dead cell. 
2.04. See, this is going to be uh, probably going to be a couple good battery packs for my for my uh, my home, my tiny house and wheels. Now I just turned around, so I have to figure out where I just was. Let me see. I just came from here. 2.04. Two point oh four, two point oh three, two point oh two, one point nine eight, not too bad. Two point oh four, point two five. That was a dead cell that I just read a minute ago. Okay, zero point two five, two point oh oh. 2.02, 2.02, and the last one, 2.03. Okay, that's good. Now, I'm going to divide these up. See, I've got two dead cells here, really bad. So, I'm going to divide these up into six, so I can start with the negative. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. And then I'm going to cut this guy off here. And then I've got, in this series, I've got the dead cells. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. So I can cut this guy off here. Actually, yeah, because he's pretty ugly looking. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, I'm liking this. These are better looking physically because that terminal has been ripped to shreds. So, next thing I'm going to do is get out the Sawzall and very, very carefully, very carefully cut these into 12 volt battery banks. And then I'm going to tear, fire up my DC generator. I'm probably going to have to back the truck over to it to get it to reach. And then I'm going to try to charge up two 12 volt battery banks before I take this all completely apart off the truck. Because once I, once I, um, take them apart then I'm gonna to have to solder on terminals as so right now I've got full battery packs so I just want to experiment play around a little bit and see if I have enough daylight today because I do need to get this off the bed of the truck so I just want to see how well they'll they'll charge up with an hour or two of, of power of course I gotta check the time I might not even have time I might have to just cut these up apart quickly and deal with it later because of the uh, the fading daylight that or this is just gonna stay in the bed of the truck for a couple days that's the choice I gotta make right now that's the problem with a 2,000 pound battery in the bed of your truck so I think what I'll do I'm gonna experimentally take one of the dead cells out today today right now and see if I can lift him out of that pack if I can even get him out and that'll be the cell I'll experiment with, the dead cell. I'm going to cut that one off separate, uh, completely with the, the sawzall. So I'm going to go get that out and uh, I'll be back in a few minutes.